Hello, my name is Keith Wynn and I am a University of Florida Office Agriculture Extension Agent in Hamilton County. Today, I am at the North Florida Research and Education Center, Suwannee Valley in Live Oak, and I plan to discuss the small plot peanut fungicide efficacy trials. Each year, peanut producers select a fungicide program designed to assist with management of disease development throughout the growing season. Prominent diseases that we focus on in this area are early leaf spot, late leaf spot, and white mold. With the development of new fungicides and the reduction of efficacy in some of the older fungicides, we feel this trial is necessary to keep local producers informed when considering fungicide options. Since 2015, extension agents in the Suwannee Valley have collaborated with Dr. Nicholas Defoe in order to conduct this trial. These agents are responsible for applying fungicides bi-weekly, taking disease ratings periodically using the Florida 1 to 10 scale, and assisting at planting and harvesting. This year we are evaluating nine different fungicide spray programs recommended by seven participating chemical companies. Each of these products are applied in two row blocks, are 30 foot long, and are replicated four times in a randomized order. This trial was planted on June the 3rd, 2020, and is 100 days old. We only have two of the seven fungicide applications left. These trials will be harvested and the collected data will be shared in future production meetings. These small plot trials that we're standing in front of here typically are looking at different fungicide programs that come from different companies that are related to the peanut RX. And typically what we're looking at in these programs is a five, six, or seven spray program out here. We're looking to control our major flora diseases of leaf spot, which is early and late leaf spot, and stem rot, which is also known as white mold in the southeast. And so what we try to do in these trials is we try to get a comparison between these programs, but also try to understand what type of disease pressure we have in these fields. So we have two controls here. One, which is an untreated check, which gives us all the disease in the field that we would expect to see within one season. And the other is we apply chlorothalonil only. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to manage the foliar diseases and hopefully get a good evaluation of what the soil borne diseases would look like. So these trials are giving us multiple comparisons each year and they're allowing us to look at different products from different fungicides and different companies and give us insights on how these work in the Suwannee Valley as well as hopefully around the state of Florida. So these trials have been conducted for now six years at the same location on the research farm and generally in the same direction as we see out here. And what we're really trying to do with these trials is not only get an understanding of what the products are doing within each season but also looking at the durability of these programs across seasons. All the products and all the programs tend to do better and are typically more economically better than our untreated control. However, some of the programs in certain years are not better than chlorothalonil by itself. So what we're really trying to figure out is why that happened. And one thing we can pull out of that, a lot of that has to do with timing and disease onset. And as we know, our pathogens can change, our diseases can change from year to year. For example, when we started this trial, we primarily had late leaf spot present, and now in the last couple of years, and as you'll see, if we go around the field here today, we have primarily early leaf spot present. So the changes in these pathogens also change where a program falls out, whether it's on the top or on the bottom, or just average with all the other programs in the trial. So looking at these programs over six years, we get a chance to understand more how durable they are. But the other thing to keep in mind is that the products are changing, and we get a chance to test these new products, but we also are losing a little bit of comparison from year to year because we do get these new products within our trials. So with peanuts, we have many fungicide options available to us, and that's a, a blessing and can also be a big problem for us when we go to look at managing diseases. And one of the things these trials allow us to do is look at the strengths and weaknesses of each of these products, as well as the programs in a field out there. And we get a chance to better understand where to apply and how to use these programs throughout the season, and get a chance to look at where they may be useful later in the season, or earlier in the season when we look at peanut fungicides. After six years of the fungicide program evaluations, we've been able to develop a few conclusions. The first is that the fungicides do provide significant yield savings and they do provide significant disease reductions. 
and this is definitely in comparison to the untreated check, as well as to the chlorothalonil control. The second, that fungicide timing and disease presence is critical to where these programs are going to end up at the end of the season for yield savings. When a disease starts, it determines when the product will be effective because products may be applied before or after disease onset and that can change how much management we'll get from that product. These trials are designed to provide producers and management specialists with information about products so they can be used to manage peanut diseases effectively and efficiently. However, there are many options available and it's not always easy to make a plan. If you do need any help, please feel free to contact me or your local extension office on how to implement a peanut fungicide program.